Good afternoon. <laughs> morning, afternoon, morning. Uh, we're on the cusp. So last time I did a BBC was in early April, and I started a topic, uh, which I think we labeled at that time, Remembering Death for Repair So Quickly. And uh, recently we've been learning about the um, eight worldly concerns, and this is one topic that really helps to counter those. If you think about what might happen after you pass away, you might consider those eight worldly concerns in a different light. Um, and one of the reasons that we don't do this is because our minds don't see things changing in a subtle, the subtle impermanence of things we actually don't see. And so we have a feeling of being constant and permanent. We, have, we carry this distortion of permanence. And that leads us to a number of problems, including being uh, thinking that the person who wakes up today is the same person who went to sleep last night, or that there's a permanent self, and that gets us in all kinds of trouble. So the Buddha kindly uh, taught that we should really keep in mind uh, gross impermanence. Our death, which is imminent, Anybody believe that? Nobody believes that in this room, I bet. <laughs> Not today. Maybe, I don't know, maybe when I'm 90. Maybe when I'm 90, it'll be when I'm 100. We just can't get that, and so, so we have to train ourselves to think about this. And so Lama Tsongkhapa, as I said last time, what I wanted to talk about were the six disadvantages of not remembering our death and not thinking that it's imminent. I think that's a good way to think about it. So, and these are, um, these disadvantages of not thinking about our death are just natural. They follow from not thinking about our death. We'll just think, well, I've got time. That's just natural that we'd think we have time. So to learn about the disadvantages of something helps us to um, see, helps us to change our minds in a positive way. And the way Lama Tsongkhapa laid this out, I think is quite interesting because he's doing it for a Dharma practitioner. And as each step goes on, you more <laughs> you find yourself in most all of them, if not all of them. But you see that even as you think more and more that you're practicing, you see where your failings are. So he starts with someone who maybe isn't even practicing much. So the first of the six separate disadvantages are, the first one is, is by failing to counteract this tendency to think that we aren't going to die anytime soon, you'll constantly just think about this life and acquiring things for this life. And that will, if you have that state of mind, you won't even really think about devoting yourself to the Dharma. And when I was reading these six, I wanted to think about examples. And the first thing that came to mind was that expression, intoxicated with youth, or intoxicated with health, or intoxicated with success. And we can see that in our own experience. When I look at my life, I can say, yes, all of those things. I didn't think much about success. I thought about doing things I was interested in, intoxicated with what I was interested in or whatever, or health or whatever. So right there, intoxicated. That means we're not seeing things clearly. We're like in a daze. And then what came to mind was years ago, Venerable led a retreat at Indianola, and I was very new to the Dharma then. And there was a person there, and we just soaked it up. I thought we all were soaking it up. And we get to the end of the weekend, and this gal says to me, well, next weekend, I'm going to a dance camp. <laughs> I just like, really? After, <laughs> after what we just heard? And it was like, for me, this came to mind when I was thinking about it. It was like the perfect example, like, this week I'm doing this, and this week I'm doing that, and it's all about this life. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with going to a dance camp. There's nothing wrong with having interests. But the idea is, is how are we holding these things in our life? And so, you know, first off, if we don't think about the imminence of our death, 
we won't think beyond this life necessarily. We'll just like the happiness of now, what I want now is all our mind would naturally go to. I mean, you just look in your experience and see if that rings true for you. So that's the very first um, disadvantage. And I'm just going to stop there and then we'll probably bundle some of the other ones together because the, the, all the rest of them are the five disadvantages of people who are actually practicing the Dharma and then how you're living your how <laughs> we're living our lives. So we'll save those. Probably bundle them. So imminent. <laughs> 